In this video, we're going to talk about the system function in C. So the system function creates a child process and then executes a shell command using the user shell. So it's a little different than some of the other C functions that interact with the operating system in that here it actually executes the command through the shell. So there's some things that go along with that. Now the system call itself is very simple to use. You pass the function a string, that's the command you want to execute. And since the shell is used to execute the command, all the typical shell substitutions, redirections, and so forth are performed before the command is actually executed. So things like wildcard substitution, environment variables, those sort of things get expanded in the same way as if you were entering the command at the shell. When the function returns, you'll get a return value that indicates that either the call was successful or it'll give you information about what type of error occurred, whether that was related to the shell or the command or something like that. Now, one thing to keep in mind is there is an efficiency cost with using system. It's not the fastest way to, for example, if you want to get a file listing, and also keep in mind that it just executes the command. It doesn't pass that information back to you, so you can't do anything with it necessarily. Again, for cases where you just want to execute a command, you don't really care about the output. The system function is ideal. So there's lots of things I can do with the terminal. And a very simple command would be something along the lines of the echo command. And I could say this is a test of the system function. And if I press enter, it displays that. Echo will also display the value of an environment variable. So if I want to, for example, see what the term environment variable is set to, I can say echo dollar sign term, and this environment variable gets expanded by the shell into what its value is. I can also list all the C files with ls star.c, and if I echo star.c, the shell expansion will list all of the available C files that exist in the current directory. Again, the shell expansion, wildcard expansion, variable expansion, and so forth, that, that all happens through the shell. So here's a C program that we're going to use to demonstrate how exactly we make a system call from our C program. So let's just write off the bat, let's just call system and let's just say echo term. And then here we'll say ls star.c. And let's just see what happens. And I'll put these lines of equal signs around each of these system calls so that we can see exactly what goes on. So we compile. So we're getting implicit declaration of function system. So we'll add the standard library header file to pick that up. And now let's run our code. And notice, in both cases, the shell actually expanded what the variables were or the wildcards were before it actually executed the code. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. When you call system from your C program, it does actually expand whatever is in here. Here we've called the function with some commands, but where we can really get some power is when we use strings. You'll notice that I'm not including the parentheses. And if you think about why that is, it's because I didn't want the shell to deal with those parentheses because that would give me an error in that shell command. So now let's print an introductory statement that, hey, we're printing this command. Let's call the command. And then let's have a printf statement at the end to say that the command is done. Now the system call has a return code, so we want to capture that. And then we're going to call this with command one, that string. So now let's add before and after print statements. Okay, so now you can see we're going to print that we're starting a system call. Then we're going to call the system in between, and then we'll print that we're done with the actual return code. So let's compile this and make sure it still works. And you can see that it executes that. Now, if we wanted to do something like ls-l star.c, we'll create another function, and then we will make a copy of what we did before. And we'll call those with command two instead of command one. 
So let's go and compile and run. And you can see it gives us a listing of all the C files in this directory. Now you may wonder, why bother with the return code? It always seems to be zero. And that's because the return codes are working. So let's say I call system with this error one string, which says do some stuff. So I'll make a copy of this last one. And so now we're doing a third call that shouldn't work because the command doesn't exist. And when we run, notice the shell returns that it wasn't found and we get a return code of 32512, which we could look that up and see what that was if we were concerned with it. Another way to get an error is let's say we want to list a file that's not there. And if we do that, we'll change that to error two. So now we're calling command one, command two, error one, and error two. Or I should say we're calling system with those four commands. And when I compile and run, you can see there we get a different error code. This actually comes from the ls command and notice the return code is different. So based on what sort of problem you'll have, you'll get a different return code that you can then look up to debug why you're getting that error. But that's why having the return code is important because you need to be able to first determine if the command didn't execute successfully, and if not, then why? So this is a brief example of how to work with the system function call. There's some other ways that you can interact with the system outside of your C program, and we'll see those in other examples later on.